Okay, so this webinar uh, today is a collaboration between the Computer Science Education Research Group at the University of Adelaide and Education Astro Services Australia Digital Technologies Hub. So we've got 30 minutes, it's a very quick session. Um, we're going to be giving you snippets, a bit of a taster for the CESA and the DT Hub courses and other resources for teaching AI in schools. And we'll be showcasing these resources and activity ideas from across both of our organisations, um, from different programs, including courses, lesson plans, uh, web resources and uh, lending libraries. So by the end of this session, you'll know where to go to access these resources and find out more and to continue learning about AI. So this is just a little snippet and a bit of a taster um, to AI and what, how we can support you. I'm Rebecca Vivian. I'm a Senior Research Fellow and Project Lead in the CESA Group at the University of Adelaide. And I'm joined um, by my colleague, Celia Koffer, who's our Project Officer for the CESA Group. And she's helping us um, coordinate and manage um, the online meeting today. And I'm also joined by Martin Richards from ESA's Digital Technologies Hub. Um, he's the Content Manager for the Digital Technologies Hub and the Maths Hub, if you um, also use that one. Thanks, Beck. Uh, webinars are a great place uh, for bringing people together from a wide range of places. So please tell us in, in using the chat function where you're joining us from today while we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're joining from. So I'm joining from Ghana country on the Adelaide Plains and I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the Ghana peoples, the traditional custodians of the land on which our university campuses are situated on. And I'm on the lands of the Bunuran people here in Victoria, and I'll pay my respects to elders past, present and future. And we would like to acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship to country of the traditional owners of the land on which we're all joining from today, including yourselves. And we respect and value their past, present and ongoing connection to the land and cultural beliefs. And we would like to acknowledge First Nations peoples as the first educators and first STEM innovators. As I mentioned, this webinar today is a combination of AI resources across both of our programs. This is just a, a snapshot, just so you get a sense of where we're coming from. Um, CESA have been running support for schools in digital technology since 2014. Um, and ESA have been doing this for a very long time now, including um, having launched the Digital Technologies Hub, I think around 2016. Correct, right. yes. <laughs> So we'd like to invite you to think about what AI technologies have you used today or where have you seen AI being used recently? So pop some suggestions into the chat, but we're going to keep moving on and continue and share some examples with you. So you might have thought of some of these as, as you're thinking through your day. Um, this list here on the screen is a few from the um, list that Stella Solar from CSIRO has created. These are 10 examples of AI that the general public has embraced um, for the full list, but this is just a little uh, snapshot of those. So some of these examples include AI being used in mobile phone features like facial recognition technology to unlock your phone or to use social media filters. You may have encountered chatbots on shopping websites driven by AI or seen TV show recommendations come up on your streaming service or news article lists as well. Um, when we started work, both of our organisations um, in the space of AI, we've both um, been developing resources since about 2020. Um, generative AI or content creators like ChatGPT weren't common at the time. Um, now generative AI has become a huge talking point and impacts many industries and has many users worldwide that we've seen. So our courses and um, resources at the moment aren't necessarily how to explain what generative AI is. Um, they go much deeper than that. And it's about really helping to upskill educators in understanding the core fundamentals of AI, you know, what it is, how it works and the benefits, issues and challenges that this technology brings. So this approach has a benefit in that no matter what AI technology we talk about or where AI technology advances to, these core fundamentals are still important and still underpin the technology 
um, you know, obviously with some new things as they new innovations come up as well. Um, so while we've seen AI being used for many good reasons, we've also seen these issues and consequences that have cropped up, such as um, deep fakes being created with AI to trick people. Um, and both CESA and DT Hub help teachers navigate how to teach these issues in the classroom through you know, interactive teaching activities. Um, you'll also see um, lots of these examples, real world examples of AI are showcased across both CESA and DT Hub resources. So what we're trying to do is help you make those connections, understand where, where AI is used, help your students understand this technology, that, that it's all around them, um, and so that you can start to generate connections and these classroom ideas based on the real technology students are using. I think one of the um, important things we've uh, included in our course, and particularly in the, you know, what is AI and just getting um, an understanding about what is AI and how you can use that as a context for learning um, with your students. So in the course, we've got, you know, um, a focus there on what uses AI and what doesn't use an AI. So we have like a sorting of the cards and you could say, you know, an automatic door, for example, does that use AI compared to a um, facial technology uh, recognition that like if you're at the airport, um, how does that work? So we're sort of comparing what uses AI and what doesn't. And you can see the downloadable cards we have on the DT Hub, some le a lesson to introduce AI with your students, what uses AI and what doesn't, and, and um, using those cards, uh, the downloadable in the classroom. We've got some good feedback from teachers who have used that. Um, yeah, but our focus is really looking at um, AI for a context of lear for learning and, you know, how do we weave that into under the underpinning concepts of DT, which is it's quite exciting and we have a number of lessons, plans that you can access. The, I think it's important, like out of that process, when you're looking at those cards or whatever, um, while you're introducing AI, it's coming up with a, a definition that students could um, you know, grasp and, and understand. And we've, we've gone for the ability of machines to mimic human, human capabilities. And you can see there the focus on to see, to read, to think and listen and to reason, solving problems without that human guidance. So doing, uh, you know, solving a task without that human um, uh, guidance there is is really what the AI is all about and mimicking those those human capabilities. And Caesar's definition is um, the same as well. And we also unpack AI as involving the following elements, um, which is around to sense, reason, act and adapt. And we then use this within our explainer videos um, on computer vision and and our natural language processing, which you'll see shortly, uh, which models how the AI is developed, how it works, and how it continually improves without that um, explicit human guidance. So when we look at AI like this, we can pinpoint you know, where data is introduced and used and how the AI model was trained and can be improved as well. Um, the Australian curriculum, you know, has identified opportunities to explicitly teach AI within mathematics and digital technologies, which is excellent. Um, there are three key aspects of learning about AI, which they, they um, highlight, which is understanding how, how AI works, types of AI and responsible use and applications of AI. And you'll see lots of our resources fully support these key aspects. In fact, both of our courses are really based around these key uh, areas um, and uh, you know that will help you be able to take what what you're learning uh, in the classroom and connect it to the curriculum as well with AI. I, I think it's important point there Beck is that um, when we first started working on the AI and, and digital technologies the curriculum really didn't reference AI but since with the emergence of chat GPT that obviously caused a huge um, interest and a need to uh, identify where it is in the curriculum. So this is this curriculum connection makes that um, more explicit with the Australian curriculum. And it also gives you, uh, I suppose, license to, to really delve into AI 
rather than when we started, it was sort of more like, um, you know, I'll, th I'll think about whether I want to or not. But this is, it's really important part of students learning is it's part of everyday life. And we want the students to be able to um, experience more about AI and, um, you know, have it incorporated into the digital technologies curriculum. So I think our resources really help you do that. Absolutely. Um, and so both courses are really helping to support teachers not only to bring AI into the classroom, but to upskill their own understanding of AI. Um, and it's for all different levels. So you could come in with, you know, no understanding of what AI is um, to perhaps having, you know, done a little bit of work learning about what, what AI is. So lots of different entry points and, you know, extensions and ways to navigate the resources and programs. Um, so our, our courses, both of them really, are supported through explainer videos, graphics and web text that you'll find um, within the, the courses and they can be used directly into the classroom. So teachers can take the videos, they can take the graphics, um, and use them in teaching if they would like to. They're all Creative Commons licensing. Here we've got an example of a video in our CESAR course, um, and we also have videos covering what is AI, um, as well as two key areas in AI, which is computer vision and natural la language processing, and we'll have some activities unpacked today a little bit there. And we also look at um, the risks and benefits of AI. And we also like to link to, you know, high quality existing resources that are freely available. So, um, for example, through organisations, um, we've got uh, CSIRO and Google's latest video explainer on AI, which was sent straight to us. Um, we're thrilled to be able to put that into the courses and, and help teachers use that as well. So our goal is really to connect teachers with other organisations leading in the space and to more and more resources, um, you know, so that you've got more to go into the classroom with. I noticed Carsten's put in the uh, URL for the explainer videos for DT Hub and also the MOOCs page. Um, Carsten and I work together on these video explainers. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Beck, um, you can see there we've just, it's, it's a really useful way to sort of explain about AI and talk through some of the fundamentals about AI using our, we've got four explainer videos. We can talk about the purpose and function, um, and we look at the benefits of these AI systems. How do they affect their daily lives? But what also are the challenges and risks of the of these AI systems? So it's it's a really useful way to analyze um, existing solutions, and that's part of the um, DT Hub um, Australian curriculum is is looking at solutions and analyzing them. So these AI solutions really enable students to to get into that and delve into the different types of systems and look at these challenging challenges and risks, but also the opportunities and then to take um, that knowledge and, and uh, to solve their own problems. So the video is a really good entry um, into learning about AI and, and discussing those key aspects with your students and dotted throughout the, we've got seven modules and dotted throughout those seven modules we've got uh, little snippets of the um, of the videos so they make um, you know you can use them and, and learn about AI in particular. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into looking at a couple of areas so computer vision and natural language processing. Um, we're going to look first at computer vision. This is essentially um, an, an approach to teaching a machine to see. So computer vision techniques are used in a whole range of different digital systems um, that allow machines to recognize objects in the world. And you might be familiar with some of the examples on the screen. So there are some interesting ways computer vision is being used, such as to help monitor plants. So this could be in the household using an app on your phone to understand why your plant is dying or it doesn't look as healthy or being used on farms through the use of um, robotics that are navigating and, and assessing crops and picking um, ripe tomatoes, uh, as well as farmers, you know, using apps. So computer vision is also being used in areas like sports medicine to help improve performance and to monitor issues. But there are many, many other um, ways it's being used. So in our CESAR AI courses, we include ways teachers can teach about these AI concepts using familiar classroom activities. So one area of computer vision um, is using feature extraction, and this is a key technique. 
So feature extraction is the idea of taking um, data in the original format, for example, an image or a photo, you know, a photo, and then um, turning it into a series of quantitative, so numeric or qualitative, so text descriptions um, that can be used to distinguish and compare different objects. So essentially um, breaking this down to what does it look like in the classroom to teach students about this, teachers could have students sorting and grouping animals. Um, you know, they could be images of them and um, sorting them by their features. They could try and determine how many groups they have or how many different types of groups that they could make. And then they could discuss uh, how easy or hard this is. So this is something machine learning researchers and AI models will grapple with as well. And then students could undertake some kind of data collection to generate information about the animals. So from here, students could look at similarities and differences. And this is a great way to connect teaching AI within maths as well. So building on after this, students have learned about the features um, as a technique. They could then implement what they've learned into something like a guess who game, which we have suggested in our course. Um, and they could be using perhaps something like animals and inviting the, their peer to guess what animal they have by explaining its features. So does your animal have two ears or does your animal have a long tail to narrow it down? So this game could be played with all sorts of themes. We've used animals as an example, but you could do transport, people, plants, and so on. Um, AI technology is being used in biodiversity tracking to more easily uh, and efficiently monitor animals with methods such as drones and cameras. And so in our Digital Technologies Plus X course, we actually have a sustainability module where teachers um, are shown a lesson plan where students use teachable machine to build an AI model simulation. So that's on the screen here that detects whether an image is a wombat or a bilby. And students do this by training it with many, many images of the two animals um, and classifying them. And ESA also have a similar activity coming up on the um, digital technologies hub using teachable machine to detect feral cats, um, which was developed by Dr. Katie Morris from Atsuma. And that's been inspired by First Nations innovations in the space using um, the technology for biodiversity tracking by First Nations rangers. Um, so both of these lessons can provide an inspiration and a framework that can be applied to your own classroom or your own students' ideas for creating computer vision solutions. So taking this tool, something like this, what other items could you classify? So you could look at cars versus pedestrians or perhaps even your students looking at finding smarter ways to sort common recycling items. Yeah, thanks, Beck. And I think it's um, Google te Teaching Machine is a really useful um, um, application for students to really unpack uh, what machine learning is all about in a really practical and simple way. And you can see there on the screen, we're just um, we've taught the AI to recognize happy and sad. And if you're really interested in how to do that, we support that with the uh, in our course, um, How Does an AI Learn? So we show you how to go through this step by step. And um, uh, we sort of also show then, you know, you can use this for year seven and eight students where in terms of uh, we've shown how to incorporate bias. So if you're, you know, if you've got um, a, a data set that includes, let's say, if you're testing faces, um, you know, if you haven't got a diverse range of faces, uh, your model won't work very well. So we go through what bias is. So I recommend if you're looking at um, at uh, using Teachable Machine, we sort of talk through some of the privacy issues and some of the issues around just making sure it's a safe tool to use uh, in your classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have, uh, through CESA, funded by the Australian Government Department of Education, uh, we have free kits, digital technologies kits that schools can borrow. And so within our kits, we actually have um, a couple of great computer vision supported technologies, which you could use. Um, a couple include Kai's clan kits. So this robot includes coding, AR, VR, internet of things and AI all in one. Um, we also have kits with iPads that include apps like Seek by iNaturalist, which is a child friendly AI tool that allows students to go around and use computer vision to um, detect uh, wildlife plants or animals or insects in their local environment. 
Um, and we've also got lesson plans as well to support their use in the classroom, or perhaps if you've got the technology already, you could jump on and download the lesson plan and use that. So let's look at natural language processing. This is essentially um, the field of AI related to human communication. Um, NLP it aims to really mimic human communication by teaching the machine to read, write, speak, and listen. And this is done by providing lots of um, communication data samples. Um, NLP is used in technologies like Google Autocomplete, virtual assistants, language translators, and um, more. So some areas you could look at within this include um, things like sentiment analysis, so predicting if text is negative, neutral, or positive. And we have a lesson example um, in Caesar's secondary AI course with suggested tools. Uh, you could look at word associations and how it relates to chat assistance. So we have a build a travel assistant activity using um, some digital tools. Uh, the ESA DT Hub also have a couple of lessons coming up. So one on predictive text, so how SMS and online search engines um, use these techniques and also detecting phishing scams as well. So that one's um, targeted to seven to eight. So keep an eye out for a couple of those resources coming up. So when you type a word into a Google search or ask a virtual assistant a question, it tries to understand the meaning of what you're saying, which is the semantics, and it's looking for the relationships between sentences, words, or signs. And so um, when you type a word in um, like cook, it'll, it'll start to look for those related words as well. So this isn't an unfamiliar idea to the classroom. So we often invite students to demonstrate meaningful relationships between words or topics by creating mind maps or lists of related words. So here we have an example of a, um, an activity from one of our courses for the primary years, looking at perhaps something like winter or weather as a topic. Um, and something else you could do with students is looking at gradient uh, word gradients within a literacy activity. So there's some great connections there with English and literacy. There are also some word association games. So you could do something like play um, a game you might all have known as uh, Family Feud. So you take a topic or a question, something like what would you find at a park? Um, and the idea is that uh, people are being surveyed to generate lots and lots of responses and then you end up with a list of top responses. So at a park you'll find ducks and perhaps pond, trees, birds. And so students could um, look at playing this game and collecting their own data and then generating their own um, lists to play with each other. And so um, this one if you wanted to learn more is also in our courses. So the idea that then in the secondary years, students can move towards using some interesting digital tools such as um, sentiment analysis and emotion analysis to analyze text. So really the idea behind this is building students' understanding of how AI works and then linking it to those familiar classroom activities. Mm. That, those activities look fantastic, Beck. Um, in our lesson on uh, fun projects with language translation, we can uh, look at NL, the NLP model. Um, Scratch, if you don't know, basically has some AI components you can add into it, some extensions. And in the course, we show you how to do that. And it's a great way for kids to learn the difference between conventional programming. So if you're using if then statements to using a very powerful AI um, plugin. And you can just see that example of code there, that, that five, um, five, or so blocks, you can translate a, a language when you type it into the um, that ask bar there, uh, and it'll say the answer in French and um, translate it pretty easily, very quickly, of course. Um, and if you did that in a conventional program, you'd have to come up with all different if then statements. Mm. But in the course, we show you how to do that very easily. And, um, you know, it's, it's um, I recommend if you're interested in doing programming, connect, connecting it with AI, definitely follow that one. Um, there also, it's with Bex and I've been talking about the different sorts of um, computer vision or if it's NLP, you can use that with your students to draw it to design an AI driven solution. And you can see here this little um, template here 
We're creating an AI-driven solution for who's the target user to help people, what's the program, uh, problem or challenge, by providing them with, you know, what's the solution. So something simple like that, we go through how to, to develop that design aspect. And the next one is we're part of the new curriculum, the version nine curriculum for Australian curriculum digital technologies is to incorporate user stories. And um, as that's a new part of the curriculum, we've introduced that with uh, a flavor of AI. So for example, in this user story, the students got, um, they're looking at the user role. So a cook who has friends from all different backgrounds, uh, what's the goal to be accomplished? I want to get uh, recipes with different ingredients so they can prepare meals that are healthy and suit a wide range of tastes and dietary requirements. And then they've got their key functions. So we're developing a, a solution because students are then have been brought on to understand how the AI systems work. They can design, in this case, like the student's got a, an app powered by AI. Um, it's trained on all sorts of recipes around the world and you type in a meal um, name and it comes up with a tasty, healthy option. So again, that sort of notion that we're learning about AI, but then we're using it to create our own solutions. I love the templates there, Martin. That's great for scaffolding students. Um, something we also like to do in our courses is to showcase careers and real case studies that you can bring and link to learning in the classroom. Um, we've got a, a lot of downloadable career postcards like the ones on the screen. So these could be used to um, just have uh, role models represented around the school or classroom or as a literacy resource for an activity in the classroom. Um, we have an a upcoming webinar which we'll send out as a follow-up um, with the Careers with STEM content specialist, Refraction Media, unpacking careers in the classroom and how you might teach that in a little bit more detail if you're interested as well. And just on the DT Hub, we've got, um, I think, nearly 30 lessons that you can go through from F to Year 10. And you can see they're organised under image recognition, the things we've been talking about today, natural language processing, machine learning, uh, recommender systems we haven't talked about, but that's a great aspect to have a look at. And we also look at ethics and responsibility uh, use of AI. And, uh, you know, both our courses sort of go through and our materials really focus on that that idea about ethics and what's responsible AI. So it's there are so many different areas you can get your teeth into to make this a really relevant um, learning experience for your students. Um, so both of our courses and resources we've talked about today can be found by going to the links on the screen. We're also going to send out a handout sheet um, to those who respond to our feedback survey. So just hold on one moment. Um, so hopefully within 30 minutes, um, we've given you some insights and a bit of a taster for what we have to support educators and what maybe AI looks like in schools. Um, we hope this has encouraged you to dive in and explore both. Um, you might be wondering which course should I sign up to because we've talked about both resources. We're really, you know, we're doing this together in partnership because we want to suggest both. We think you'll receive more support. Um, AI can be a complex topic and the feedback we've heard from teachers is the more that they go over, you know, learning about this topic in different ways with different resources, um, the more they come to understand it and find different ways to explain it and bring it into the classroom. So uh, repetition is a good thing, but both Caesar and DT have Hub have their own way of explaining things and also their own example and lesson activities. So by doing both or going and exploring both programs, you'll just come away with more resources, essentially. So um, definitely jump in and um, get those resources. I noticed as we were talking, Vic, um, Carsten was kindly putting in links to those um, elements of both, both programs. So thanks, Carsten. And uh, just on that, if you are... Uh, I didn't mention, but if you wanted to know about the inner workings of an AI, we've got uh, um, a course uh, module on, on that. It's really interesting. So if you really want to delve into how an AI uh, works under the hood, that's really, um, you might be wanting to have a look at that one. But as you can see there, we've got classroom resources and professional learning. Um, you know, I, I recommend you go through and just have a bit of a squeeze at what we've got to offer. Um, and 
and thank you for joining us today. The recording will be available on Caesar's YouTube channel where you'll find some of our AI videos as well. Um, so we'll send that out to everyone once it's uploaded. Um, there's also lots more info on our other courses that we have. So we don't just have AI featured in the AI course. It also comes up in our Digital Technologies Plus X course and other courses that we have. Um, so there's lots more going on there. You can subscribe to our newsletter to also find out about more information about courses and PL events like this. Um, we hope to hold another one with ESA in the future. They've been a great collaborator and um, partner since back in 2016. Um, so it's been great to join up again and share all of our resources um, that we have here today. So thank you for joining us.